Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going for a double spread on my art journal and the inspiration came from this lovely collection by Stamperia, it's called Garden of Promises and of course you can find it in different sizes of pattern paper, there are chipboard die cuts that you can find, there are stencils, rice paper and for this page I'm going to focus mainly on the pattern paper as well as on the die cuts so I'm going to browse through the pad so you can see what you're getting but let me switch into the 8x8 one just because it fits better on frame and I'm browsing quickly through all the pages absolutely lovely warm colors, gorgeous flowers yet another beautiful collection from Stamperia now this is where I'm going to get the focal points. These are the pages that I will be using for my art journal project today. But here is a lovely clock that can be used as a focal point also. And today's project is going to be really easy to recreate. So if you are a beginner you will have lots of fun and the end result is guaranteed. So let's start by grabbing the art journal and first of all I'm going to fuzzy cut my focal points. So as I mentioned previously I'm going to fuzzy cut the book and uh, I'm using the 12 by 12 paper pad for that just because the focal points are bigger in this page and let's start first by adding some color on the background for that I'm going with acrylic paints for today I like using the Allegro collection by Stamperia just because they have a wide range of colors and they are quite fluid so they are really easy to work inside a NAR journal now I get a lot of questions whether I apply gesso before my uh, acrylic paints this really depends on the book that you are working on if the pages are very thin then it is a good idea to prepare the pages beforehand with gesso so that uh, the paint doesn't bleed at the back however I'm working on quite a thick page so this is not an issue and I will show it to you in a bit I'm just applying the color with the brush and I'm blending the two colors directly on top of my page the colors that I'm working with are doll pink and pink and this is the easiest way to apply some color on your background and get rid of that blank page which is so scary for this project I chose to go with pale colors only two of them this is what I usually do for my background just to make sure that they stay quite uh, subtle and you can see the back of the page just because this journal has thick pages I have no issue with bleeding and now let's make the background look more interesting and not so flat so for that I'm bringing my brayer and I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, acrylic paint this is milk white so here I'm introducing a third color on my background however this is white which means that it's, uh, it is quite neutral and it is going to make the background even more dull than it is one thing that I keep in mind when I'm creating backgrounds, playing with layers and adding layers upon layers is that I want the background to be quite uh, subtle, well at least in most of my projects. Now since I have all that white paint I did dilute it with water and I'm adding some white splashes and now to match the style of the collection I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So I'm using vintage photo here and I'm going all around the edges any brush, any blending brush that you have would do the trick for this one and uh, I'm applying a little bit of color which brings the eye more towards the center and at the same time it creates kind of a border if you follow my videos you already know that I like to have kind of uh, darker edges on my projects And since I have the brown ink out, let's make some brown splashes. I'm just swiping a little bit of ink on my glass mat, diluted with water, and then just go for it. I feel like up to now all the steps are quite doable for a beginner, and you can easily follow the steps to end up with this background. Now let's make this background even more interesting by having some fun with stenciling. This is a stencil from the same collection and it is a combination of text and flowers. I am going to apply volume paste over it. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of applying this paste over the stencil, but all I did was to just use my spatula and go over the stencil in random areas. But you will see the result here. Now, if you are in the look 
for a paste that is quite thick, it dries quickly and keeps its shape, then this is the paste for you. I have been using it for a month now and I absolutely love it. Notice I don't peel off that paper completely, I keep it along with the lid so that I have some extra protection to keep the paste from drying. Here is how the background looks up to now. And now let's do some stamping. For that I'm using some basic stamps, a coffee stain stamp and I'm using brown ink, that same vintage photo ink that I used previously for the background. So I have the same colors again and again. And uh, I'm going to introduce one more stamp with lots of dots just to add some more interest there. And with this one I didn't even bother to use a stamping block, I'm just going directly with my fingers and this way it keeps it quite random and organic and I don't get the perfect impression. And here is how the background looks at the moment, it is ready to stick the focal point on top, whatever that is. Now I did fuzzy cut the books previously, so I'm going to leave this aside to dry and I will work on the focal points. For that I'm going to add a little bit of that vintage photo just because I have the same color on my background. A little trick that I keep on doing with my focal points since I want to somehow connect all those different elements together and make them have a coherent look so that they look as if they are part of the same project. I'm even going to use the stamps that I used for the background, so here comes the coffee stain, again using the same brown ink, and then I'm going to bring in the one with the dots and add a few of them on top of the books as well. Now the books that I cut out are from the 12 by 12 pad, and I'm going to show you how they look on the 8 by 8 one. These are quite smaller, so it really depends on the size of uh, the Arduino that you are working on. Just go ahead and get the pad that you feel works better with the size of your journal. Now I'm going to try and decide where everything is going to go and uh, whenever I have a big focal point that has to go over the center of the page I like to cut it in half. I do that because I have found that over the years the focal points that go over the center they tend to lift and that's something that I don't like and I prefer to cut them and then puzzle them together back on top of my journal. Now I'm going to stick everything down with my white glue Now you can easily embellish your page, your project, by fuzzy cutting flowers from your pad. But if you don't like fuzzy cutting, you can get the chipboard cutouts and you can get the ones which are stickers or you can get them in a bag full of different designs, which aren't stickers however. So I'm going to mix and match designs from those two and just stick them on top of my page. Now if you don't like to add too much bulk inside your art journal, you can definitely peel off the backing and make them thinner. This is something that I like to do sometimes in order to minimize the bulk inside the pages. However, these are not as thick as you can imagine. So it doesn't really matter if you don't add too many or in every other page. So I'm sticking this flower composition with glue on one side, then at the top I do have another flower with leaves and this is from the sticker chipboards. 
And then from this 12 by 12 pattern paper, I'm going to cut out one of the tags. And this has a lovely quote that matches my original uh, layout perfectly today. And it says flowers need time to blossom. So I'm going to cut out those words and just stick them down. I am using my matte glue here and now once everything is down it's time to do the finishing touches and that's uh, using my white gel pen to add some highlights, one of my favorite techniques. I just go ahead and add sketchy lines that look like highlights in different parts of the cutouts, both on the books, on the leaves, on the flowers just adding little details that are the same on all the cutouts, helping the whole thing to come together. I also like to grab a black marker and outline my quote. And to finish it off, I'm going to add some white splashes. For that, I decided today to go with ink. This is um, ink that is meant for calligraphy, but it works great for art journaling as well. I'm just going to dip in a brush and add my white splashes all over the place. And that's the page for today. A simple design that can be recreated easily from anyone. Lots of fun playing with paper, acrylic paints, stencils, paste and so much more. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Links to everything I used can be found down below. And I'll see you all next time.